All right, we're live. What's going on? What is up? Let's check those audio levels. We're good. All right. This will be a fun one. I'm going to take some call-ins. Shouldn't take me too long to get through these seven points. And uh, let's do a little housekeeping before we get started. Um, so if you guys are watching this somewhere else on the interwebs, the YouTubes, the Twatters, the Twitches, just do me a solid and uh, come over to YouTube. And um, when you get here, hit the like button just to get those up. It just helps me out with the algorithms. And uh, we'll get started. We get, uh, get some guys watching. Not a lot of likes. Hit the like button. doesn't cost anything. helps me out. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to start by saying this. So I have, um, I have a private community. A lot of guys come in it and, um, you know, they want to do some work on themselves. And this is a recurring thing that I've seen come up uh, a few times in the last week. And let's be honest. I mean, guys think this way a lot. So I'm going to use my amazing visual art skills here. Do that up to Sharpie. I don't have a Sharpie. All right, we'll use this blue pen. Fuck it. <clears throat> we are going to do it this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So you guys should know what a bicycle wheel looks like, right? It's got spokes and a hub in the middle. Wheel on the outside. Now this is how most guys, where's my highlighter? Lots of things keep going missing around here. Um, all right, we're gonna keep using this one. So most guys, they'll come to this space, they'll read some books, they'll watch a bunch of videos, they'll tune into some podcasts. Some provide some information, some, some try to hold horrible people accountable. Um, I'm going to use one spoke here as a visual, kind of explain this to you. I'm just going to color it in here because this is what most guys do. The vast majority of people that come across this information, red pill information, they, you know, they unplug, they see the code in the matrix. They see what's going on. This is what they end up doing. Just got to shade in a few of these to get you the visual going. <clears throat> just bear with me. My art skills are not up to par. I actually went to an art high school, believe it or not. And uh, they used to ship all the uh, all the artsy kids in from different districts. I just happened to be in the district that the art school was in, and I had to go to that school. So it was always funny. We used to call them the artsy fartsy kids. Um, OK. <laughs> so here's your visual, folks. So you see the. The spokes in the wheel. And by the way, like these things here, I'm going to try to get my face out of it so it's not trying to focus on my face. So these things here could be 10, 12, 17 spokes, depending on how I want to define it. But I want to narrow it down to these top seven. And most people will come in, they'll get red pillow wear. So this one spoke here that's colored in right up to the tip, okay, all the way in, <laughs> not just the tip, but all the way up. That one there would be RPA. Let's just call it red pillow awareness. A lot of guys can get there very, very easily. They'll read a few books. They got my book. They've watched a few of my videos. They've seen a few of the podcast episodes. You know, they follow me on social and they consume some other content. They're like, okay, I got it. I see the code in the matrix. Looks money, game, status, da da da. Right? And then they're like, okay, okay, okay. So now they're aware. And then they just kind of stop there, which is so bizarre to me. Or they'll start complaining or sulking or they'll go to a dark place or they'll go looking for others to uh, you know, confirm the reasons why they're not getting what they want. And then these other ones, I'll just put L, M. What did I jot down here in my description notes here? Looks, money, status, game, frame, and captivation. Captivation is really important. I'm gonna talk about that one because a lot of dudes miss that, especially the older guys with bank too. Looks, money, status, game, frame, captivation, and RPA. Okay, so they got one, that one right there. They got the one, but then guess what? They don't bother with the other ones. They just don't. They'll just they'll just go, you know what? My looks department is eh. What am I gonna do about it? 
my money status is eh. I'm just going to keep working my minimum wage job or whatever, you know, annual pay gets you. It's like, eh. Like, if you can go 10 out of 10 on your awareness level, see the code in the matrix, unplug from the comforting lies, see the uncomfortable truth, understand what women respond to. You see it all. You're fully red pill aware. But then you're like, eh, you know what? There's only so much money out there. And that guy has a lot of it, and that guy has a lot of it. And how the hell am I supposed to get out of get some of it? There's, it's just impossible for me to get it. And then they're like, you know, like a four out of ten in the money. And then that means that they don't have a lot of status, they don't have a lot of influence. So they're like a three out of ten, or a four out of ten, or a five out of ten. Maybe they're better looking, or they're, you know, a reasonable athlete on a sports team with a following of five hundred people, or something like that. You see what I'm saying? Like these things will start to fluctuate. So they're so they're fully aware, but. They just kind of don't bother with the other things. Game, you know, they don't bother trying to game. They don't try to bother. They don't bother trying to game women when they go on dates. They don't bother trying to game, you know, people in their lives when they're when they're going about things, right? Like to 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 see how they respond to certain things, right? Frames another really important one. Some guys will get full on red red pill awareness. The trad cons love to do this. So they'll, they'll go full on, you know, red pill awareness. They'll get a girl. They start dating. You know, she lets him, uh, you know, touch her boobies. Uh, she touches his pee pee. They start to date. Things start to go well. They become exclusive and they start, you know, like their boyfriend and girlfriend or something like that. But then they totally lose a frame in the relationship, even though what brought them to the space got them the information. They see the code in the matrix, they unplug, and then they just like, you know what? I'm just going to leave it. I'm not, I'm not going to apply that. Right. It's like, Taking years and years of boxing or jujitsu or karate or something like that, and then some guy picks a fight with you and you just stand there and you do nothing with it. Same thing. Let's move on. Let's talk about the captivation one. It's another big, big spoke in the wheel. Actually, you know what? This is a huge spoke in the wheel. A lot of guys, a lot of guys really, really miss this one too. Big time. Big time. You know who misses captivation the most? And all it really means is well, here, let's Google the, def the dictionary definition terms so we can break it down exactly. Oh, what does the Webster say? The state of being intensely interested as by awe or terror. That would be even even better, you know. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want somebody to be terrified of you, but you want them to not be particularly comfortable, right? Now, the state of being intensely interested in something captivated by is very very important i see a lot of more seasoned men out there i've got i've got one friend of mine he um he's in my group he uh recently had a uh, a nice date with a younger lady didn't go so well he had a, a slight mishap with his uh mode of transportation um i know you're watching my friends so that's why I'm, I'm mentioning you and I said to him early on when we were chatting, because he was really struggling, you know, he had his, he, like, he really had his game together, he had his money sorted, he's a good looking guy, he takes care of himself, like, pro like, properly executed with self care, you know, for his age, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think that he's 60, like, he looks at least 10 to 15 years younger. Um, and again, you know, had a number of exits in his business, has done very, very well, but he didn't really have anything interesting going on. Again, the definition of captivation, a state of being intensely interested. Women, like you can do anything to women. They've said this for a long time. You can do anything to women except bore them. Can't bore them. You can do pretty much anything else, literally. But you can't bore them. Women don't have patience for boring, right? So you're a rich guy, decent looking, you're in good shape, but you don't have anything interesting to do with women when you take them out. Why? You know, it's like all these spokes in a wheel. You could... You could have the looks, the money, the status, red pill awareness, blah, 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 but you're not captivating. That wheel's not going to, you put pressure on it and then it transfers into the hub as you're rolling down. The spokes of the wheel that aren't fully maximized out are not going to hold the weight of the wheel. It's going to run lopsided. It's not going to work properly. And that's what most guys get themselves into if you see what I'm saying. Again, look at that visual. Just look at it. That's what most guys do. Oh, I'm fully red pill aware. I know what I know what women respond to, blah, blah, blah. But they're fat or they're broke or they're not interesting. They don't have any hobbies. I had a conversation the other week with another guy. Um, he kind of went into a dark place, you know, like a sulking area of the internet. And 
collaborated with a few other guys in that space who confirmed his, you know, his deepest, darkest fears. And, um, he started to walk away from that, which is a, you know, which is a good move. But when I asked him like what he likes to do for fun, you know, like, what do you, what do you do when you're not working? Cause basically what he does, he works and then he goes home and then he works and he goes home. It's like, okay, well, what do you do for fun? Right. Cause you know, cause he's trying to date women. I get it. Fine. You know, that's your imperative. You're on this earth to scatter seed. You like women. I get it. Fine. But there's work to do. So I says to him, what do you do for fun? I like to go to the gym. Um, I like to work. I like to talk to some of the guys in the IT department and, you know, stuff like that. Okay, but if you ask a chick out, what are you going to tell her? Like, let's go and go to the gym together? Because he's not particularly fit. Like, he's not a Chad, okay? He's not a jacked, muscled up, shoulders like boulders, big dude, right? So it's not like, you know, he's going to say, hey, let's go to the... He's, he's, he's kind of... He's kind of moving in that direction. He's starting to anyway. But on a scale of like Rip Chad to Poindexter, he's more on the Poindexter side still. And that's not a disparaging comment. That's just stating fact. And it's like, okay, if you're on that side of the scale, you're not going to get an attractive woman to want to go out and do something like work out with Poindexter. She'll probably work out with Chad. So it's like, what are you going to do to be captivating? Like, what do you do that's interesting when you're not working? And, you know, guys, if you're in your 20s, why don't you have something going on? Like, I understand older guys. Like, older guys have social networks. They might have business forums that they're involved in, entrepreneurs groups. Uh, they might have obligations to, you know, their own children if they're fathers. Um, so they might have less time. But if you're a younger guy and you're dating and you don't have anything interesting going on in your world, how are you going to introduce women into it? You know, you don't go to her world, okay? When you're dating women, guys, and this is especially true for older guys. Older guys make this mistake a lot, a lot of the times too. You don't, you don't go into her world and be like, "Oh, let's go to the Justin Bieber concert," or you know, whatever that narrative is. You get the point. You're not going into her world. You're inviting her into your world, and a woman is only going to want to come into your world and do something with you if you're interesting, if you're captivating, if you can keep her attention, and it doesn't take a lot of money. I'll be honest with you guys. It doesn't matter where you live. This guy happened to live in a uh, nice part of the world. I'm not going to say where. Very nice part of the world that happens to have um, waterfalls and nice national parks. And I'm like, you know, like, what do you do for fun? Oh, you know, I... Um, basically nothing. You know, what I got. Well, why don't you invite her out on a date, pick up a couple of, uh, you know, cold drinks or coffees or something, or tell her to make a picnic, for example... You know, if this is a longer one, if it's a second date or something like that, and then take her to go and explore. Let's go into this national park and go and hike over to this waterfall, right? That's interesting. That'll be captivating. A lot of women are down for stuff like that. But if you're just like, ah, eh, you know, I just go to work and I like to go to the gym and I sometimes talk to my friends after work and we have a beer sort of thing. That's not particularly interesting. Great. You're red pill aware. What about the other spokes of the wheel? What about the other spokes of the wheel? Looks as simple, right? If you're not the best version of yourself, and I'll tell you why it's so simple, guys. It, <laughs> this boggles my mind. What is it, like 50, 60 something percent of the North American population is categorically unhealthily obese, morbidly obese, fat, whatever category you want to put it in, you're not fit. You're getting out of the shower, you're looking down, and you don't see your Johnson or your feet, because it's covered in belly fat or your man boobs or both, right? Looks matters. Women want to be with an attractive guy. They want to be with a guy that looks good. I covered this in my book right here. The 1.62 golden ratio is measured from shoulder to waist. They want a V taper. If you want an accentuated, like an overly exaggerated version of what that looks like, Johnny Bravo, old you know, back in the day cartoon character. That's why they V tapered him like that. That's of course not physically possible. It's an exaggeration because it's a cartoon character, but you get the idea. Women want to see a guy with broader shoulders and a narrower waist. They don't want to be with a guy that's shaped like a pear. But most guys will come in. Oh yeah, I'm red pill where I get it. I understand. Looks, money, status, solipsism, hypergamy. Okay, I got it. Yeah, she's not yours. It's just your turn. Okay, women wait at the finish line to pick the winner. Got it, got it, got it. They get all that information. And then they get out of the shower and they still look down and they can't see their feet or their Johnson. And they're putting on weight and they're not doing anything about the way they look. They don't go to the gym. And by the way, you know, 
these spokes again, it's not just, you know, like the one spoke over there. These things can be divided off. When you look at a bicycle spoke, there's usually like, I think it's somewhere between five to seven spokes that kind of like fork off in different directions and triangle out. And they do that for, for strength reasons. But something in a looks department, for example, you could tie in self-care, you know, you could tie in lifestyle habits, you could tie in competency skills like fighting. One of the things that, um, you know, it was so funny. And I did this too. Like, okay, like I was a poster boy. I'm being completely honest with you. For years, I trained. I lift weights, deadlifts, bench press, squatting. I could put three plates on, bench them, no problem for reps. You know, squat a bunch of plates, no problem. Do all that stuff. I was strong, very strong, in fact. But I realized one day, and nobody really messed with me. Like I'd go to bars and nightclubs and nobody ever really, you know, pick fights with me just, just because I was a bigger guy, right? But then I realized one day, well, what happens if I do have to fight? What happens if the need's called upon me where I got to raise fists and do something? Do I know how to deal with it? And I, you know, I started looking into it. And it's like, okay, well, let me go to a dojo and I'll start talking to these guys. And I got in a Krav Maga and now I've switched more over to boxing and stuff. And it's like, I started messing with guys at the dojo that were 100 pounds lighter than me and smaller than me that showed me that just focus energy. It doesn't matter if you're big and strong, like, you know, if you've got like the bodybuilder sort of look or even like a swimmer's body. Women want the swimmer's body, by the way. They don't want the bodybuilder look, generally speaking. They want more of a thinner tone, muscular sort of build. So think guys like Michael Phelps, for example. I thought to myself, this, this little dude is able to manipulate me and basically fold me into a pretzel when, you know, the other day I was at the gym, you know, benching three plates. You see what I'm saying, right? So it's like, you know, all of these things kind of like, like funnel out into different areas sort of thing if you know what i'm saying okay looking at the chat you guys are really lighting this one up today guys do me a solid if you're enjoying the cast just hit the like button okay we've got a lot we've got hundreds of people watching i got 100, 178 likes right now you know it doesn't cost you anything just hit the like button if you're enjoying the cast so we talked about looks competently skilled fighting you know self-care um mindfulness you know as far as meditation getting focus you know getting your sleep right all of these things kind of tie into that spoke that might you know filter out into difference money you know <laughs> i kind of hit on this earlier but i was talking about this at one point i think it was a year ago and then out of nowhere you know because i said something like there's all this money that's flowing through the internet every single day and all you got to do is create some value and reach out there and grab some of it. And oh boy, didn't the sulking little whiny little bitches come at me with, Richard's so out of touch, he doesn't understand. He's got the money, but he doesn't understand how hard it is to make it. You can't. Fine, be poor, I don't care. It's like when I talk about cryptocurrency, I've been saying it for years. Get crypto, buy Bitcoin, buy Ethereum. Understand layer one solutions. Look at smart contracts. Get your head, up, head around it. Ah, it's a Ponzi scheme. It's not going anywhere. Me, me, me. Fine. Have fun being poor. Looks money. So we talked about money. So much of it out there. Deve <laughs> Who said it earlier this week? Ed Latimer. I have Ed, Ed Latimer. He's a retired heavyweight boxer. I got him lined up for uh, Thursday for playing to win. Great guy. Very, very smart. Former alcoholic. Has a lot of fascinating stories. You know, used to fight and everything like that. He said earlier this week, I saw his tweet, I can't, I can't remember what, what it said verbatim, but it was something along the lines of, if you want, if you want to have FU money, if you really want to have FU money, you need to have FU skills. Because one thing doesn't go without the other. Just think about that, right? People that have acquired a vast amount of wealth or money, what that translates into is a store of, of, of value because that's all money is. It's a store of value. You go and do something, you create value. Somebody gives you money, that money or the cryptocurrency, whatever it happens to be, is a monetary number of value, which you can now withdraw, send, solve problems. Somebody is a, a problem for you. You know, you can hire a lawyer and fix it. You have a medical issue, you can pay for it. You see what I'm saying, right? All that money is, is a store of value that you can then deploy to deal with problems that come up in your life. Let's move on to status. Oh, this is going to be a this is going to be a longer one. I, I thought I was going to churn and burn through this in like twenty minutes, but this is going to be a longer one. So let's talk about status, significance. Again, guy guy comes in, he's red pill aware. I get it. Cup is full. Ten out of ten understands it all. Looks money status game. Hypergamy solipsism. She doesn't care about da da da. da. Waits at the finish line. Okay. Mm hmm. It's not no, it's just your turn. Kevin from sales. Steve from accounting. I got it. And then they don't fill up on the other ones. Status. If you're insignificant in life, 
become significant. That's really what it boils down to. That's all that it really boils down to. If you're insignificant, do something of some significance with your life. Now, not everybody's going to do that. I understand. Somebody's going to say right now, but Rich, not everybody can be significant. We can't all be significant. Well, you can be as significant as you possibly can be, depending on where you live and what your skills are. Don't tell me you can't go up one, two, or three points better than where you are right now. You're lying. You're lying to me and you're lying to yourself if you're going to tell me that nonsense. You know, I got an email earlier today from this dude and um, he said something like, hey, what's crack a Rich? I'm so-and-so and I help you book big names in the podcasting world. <laughs> what's what's crack a Rich? I thought that was hilarious. Anyway, so I opened up the email because of the what's crack a lacking and I read it and I was like, no, no, no. he's got pictures of like these three guys that, that he interviewed on his podcast. You know, this dork. Two of them I wouldn't touch with a 10-foot 10 10 pole because they're cucks. And then the other one, I mean, if I wanted to, I could pick up the phone or I could DM him and I could say, hey, man, you know, let's do a collab. What's crack a Rich? You know, let's get some status going on. That's what doors open when you have status, right? I can reach out to a heavyweight boxer that's retired like Ed Latimer and say, yo, dude, let's, you know, let's collab and do a podcast. You know, we said, hell yeah, let's do it, right? I got PD Mangan lined up as well. A couple weeks from now, I got this dude that right now I've got to record this tomorrow because he's sailing across the Mediterranean to the Canary Islands, um, and he's not going to be with an internet connection for a while. So I got to record it. So I'm going to have to release it later. But you get my point, right? Like when you have some social status, when you have some influence, you can reach out to people and they will respond. I got a big list, big list of names over here on my whiteboard. You can't see it in the uh, the camera. The camera's mounted, so I can't turn it. But I've easily got. 10, 20, 30. I've got about 45 different names there of people that I've got on my hit list for my Playing to Win podcast. The Playing to Win podcast, it's just on YouTube right now, so you can't find it on, on Spotify. So once, once I get it to the point where the views make sense for me to pay my guy to put it on podcast platforms, you'll find it over there. So tune in for it on YouTube for now. But status does matter, guys. Status creates option for you. You know, I've said before, your network is your net worth. I'm going to say it again. Your network is your net worth. You could strip you could strip a guy like Elon Musk of his billions of dollars and his his companies, his space, his solar panel, his rockets, all that shit. You could strip him of all of that stuff and pick him up and drop him on another continent. As long as he's got his Rolodex, I'm using Rolodex as a term, it's an old term for you, for you young ones out there that don't understand, so I'm dating myself. But as long as he's got his contact list on his phone, let's say, and he needed to reach out to somebody, anybody, they would respond to him. So your network is your network. That's what status means, okay? Significant. Let's move on to frame. Um, I'm going to drop the link again to call-ins so copy so guys if you're watching this somewhere else on the internet you're gonna have to come over to youtube because i don't deploy it everywhere i'm just gonna put it on uh youtube and then pin it to the top call in and ask a question live or if you have a share um moff i see in the in the uh the chat if you want to share anything on tonight's topic uh by all means uh, calling to do and doom and let me pin that up to the top pin message all right it's up there so if you guys want to chime in or ask a question tonight i'll get to that in a second you just start clicking through um let's talk about status we talk status let's talk about game game is important so red pill awareness is one thing in my view okay game is the execution of said knowledge that's what a lot of these doomers do, right? They'll show up, they'll go all dark. Oh, I hate this is fair. Women are hypergamous. Uh, ma, 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 ma. Okay, and they don't do any of the work. And they'll never move to applying game. They'll never move to, like, dude, I was at the bank the other day and I was gaming, you know, the banker, right? To, to, to get what I needed done. I'll do it on the phone, you know, if I'm the, on the, like I had to, uh, the, the uh, sticker for my uh, plate, it got lost. And they have these stupid rules and shit you got to dance around. I'm gaming around the phone, you know, get the sticker, right? 
game is more is not just useful to get girls to get a date to be intimate with her game is useful in business transactions it's it's useful in a lot of different things and if you don't use the skill on a regular basis in your life it's going to decay you're not going to hone it you're not going to master it again I'm going to hold it up if you guys are coming in late to the show these spokes in the wheel they matter you can you can have a full tank here on red pill awareness but if you're missing all all the other ones the spoke never makes full contact you're not a 10 out of 10 in that area and wheels don't rotate properly if the spokes aren't all in place you're going to get shit results with that that's what most guys do and then they're just like ah i'm out it's not fair ah, i feel this is another one that bugs me and i had to rip somebody in my community earlier today because he started whinging and whining well i feel like men's smv should peak at this point instead of this point you know what i don't care what you feel i dm them i don't care what you feel okay your feelings don't matter the reality of it all is if you do the work and you level up by the time you get to your mid to late 30s you're at your smv max as a dude okay i don't care what you feel that's the reality of it. That's how people operate. That's how it works. But I feel like it should be this way instead. I feel like she should just like me for who I am. Slide them all the way down the other end of the scale over to the Poindexter side. That's what these guys believe, right? Game. See a few of you guys waiting there in the area. Give me a give me a couple minutes. Make sure your cameras are on, guys, because. Uh, I am only taking the inbounds from guys when your cameras are on. And if you can tell me in the private chat, there's a little private chat there. Let me know what it is you want to talk about too, just so I can sort through everybody's requests to join. I only have so much time. Um, frame is the application of game in a relationship generally over a period of time. It could be a friends with benefits. It could be a plate, could be a girlfriend, open, exclusive, could be a wife, open, exclusive, depending on how it is you want to run, run your life. But frame is the control of that relationship. Rolo's number one rule. It's all about frame. In every relationship, one person enters the other person's frame. Okay? When somebody tries to take the frame away from you, let it happen, betatization through a thousand concessions starts to occur. You have to apply it. Red pill awareness is one thing. Game is another. That's the actual application frame. You know, it's a very close spoke to that frame is something that you're going to apply when dealing with women over, over a period of time, over a term could be short, medium, long term. It doesn't matter. Make sure you're always operating in your frame. She's in your frame is basically what I'm saying. And then the captivation part, which I talked about again, captivation. Just don't be boring, guys. That's that's really what it just boils down to. Don't be boring. Don't be basic. Don't be... And you know what? One of the chapters of my book, again, I covered, I talk about motorcycles. Motorcycles like were the easiest way for me in my 20s. I rode bikes from about 17, 18, I think it was, all the way up to 30-ish. So the, the vast majority of my 20s, you know, I spent riding fast motorcycles. I didn't really get into fast cars until I started to move away from bikes, but they're very cheap. You can buy, you can buy a nice bike for like seven, $8,000. They're not expensive. They get, they're incredibly fast. They get great gas mileage. The way that they're laid out it literally forces her to be intimate with you. She's got to hold on to your waist. Okay. She's not going to hold on to bars when you're accelerating or, you know, flying around canyons or going fast. She's going to hold on to your waist. It forces intimacy. Okay. It's exciting. You're in full control. She has to trust you. She has to give you 100% of her trust to get on the back of a bike and believe that, you know, her life will be safe with you. And she's going to be scared, of course, because what could happen? Somebody could hit you. You could be a terrible rider and wipe out. So there's an element of fear that comes into that equation as well, which is actually a good thing, right? You don't want women feeling too comfortable all the time right? There has to be some surprise. There has to be something interesting going on. And, you know, again, I'm just using this motorcycle example. This is just one example of many that we can possibly use, but a motorcycle is a exciting thing. doesn't cost you a lot of money to get into. It forces intimacy. Um, it's 
cheap mode of transportation, cheap on gas, super fast. It, there's, there's amazing social groups and networks that you can get into. You got nothing going on in your world but work and going to the gym every once in a while, and you're still on the Poindexter scale, get a motorcycle. Your life will improve dramatically overnight, I promise you. Your SMV will go up at least one point by getting a cool motorcycle and then starting to use it and interacting with other people and hanging out in social groups, making friends, going to the coffee shop, hanging on the ramps. There was this one section in Toronto. Um, for those of you that live in Toronto will know this, but the Shepherd DVP ramps were basically this big figure eight of um, loops that you could basically ride as long as you wanted to, just the way they structure the ramps. And, you know, we used to go there and hang off the bikes and go back and get the coffees. And there was girls there sometimes. Sometimes we'd bring girls. Sometimes it was just the bros. But it's exciting. It's interesting. And that's all that the captivation part means is just be interesting. Just do something fun. It doesn't have to be bikes. Figure out whatever that other thing looks like. I'm just using that as an example, right? It's, it's a placeholder, right? If you want to learn more about that again, guys, grab the book on Amazon, Unplugged Alpha. It's in Kindle, print, and Audible. I narrated it myself. It's worth its weight in gold. Grab it. Let's see what we got here in the uh, waiting area to chop it up. Let me grab these super chats first to see what we got here in the comments. And guys, uh, and again, if you want to hop in, uh, it's pinned to the top of the YouTube. So head on over to YouTube so you can um, click it and then just let me know in the um, private chat what it is you want to talk about. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Rippleware, love Ed stuff. Yeah, dude, you're going to love uh, the cast I got with Ed Latimer when it comes up later on this week. Uh, freedom means being able to humbly accept at a loss. My boss knows he can fire me and I would have another job lined up before I hit the door. Yeah. It make it like... So I've said this before, guys. You need to work yourself in a position where you're irreplaceable, where if you leave the business, they're going to struggle. They're going to suffer at your loss, right? Most employees never get to that point. They're like paperweights you know they just keep a seat warm that's moving closer to anti-fragility right not everybody's going to run a business not everybody's made or cut out to be an entrepreneur i understand that but if you've got your money sorted even as an employee or somebody in a position where maybe you're in a stem role for example and you make more money than the average job i mean if you just enter and you know entry positions making minimum wage you're never going to reach a position closer to anti-fragility they're going to say take the job you're going to be like okay i don't want to lose my job so i'll go do it but guys that have done work in other areas of their life could just potentially say you know what i'm not going to do this i'm going to go start my own business so you can pound sand screw it right i feel like money is like women it's not yours it's just your turn um sure sure um, Ryan says, if you're only willing to do what's easy, life will be hard. If you're, you know, one time somebody said to me, and I've had people say this to me throughout my life many, many times over the years. I had this guy once, he's like, I think I was on a call with him, um, for a good 45 minutes. And he just sat there and he listened. And I was telling him about, you know, what I was doing. You know, this guy was a high level coach and he's like, when did you start judging yourself so harshly? in your life. And I said to him, I said, I've always held myself to high standards and judge myself harshly so I could get things done. Right? Now, there's a new age Wusa movement of let's hold hands and sing Kumbaya and be more inclusive and all that sort of stuff. And maybe that works for some people. But be more judgmental of yourself. I'll be honest with you. I mean, most people are way too easy on themselves. It's like, ah, you know, I'll just chalk it up as an L and that's fine. It's like, you know, there's a silver lining in every L. Every single loss that you come across, whether it's with women, whether it's with money, whether it's with friends, whether it's with business colleagues, business partners, there's a silver lining in it. Look for it and learn from it, right? Uh, what else we got here? Do I feel, yeah, smash the thumbs up. That would be great. Merry Christmas, Rich, and thank you for all the free info. You're very welcome. Watch, guys, watch the other podcast um, that I've done on this playlist on the Unplugged Alpha. It was previously called Before the Train Wreck. I retired that name and moved over to the Unplugged Alpha. I think there was at least 100 something episodes, 105 or 109 episodes on Before the Train Wreck. Go watch them. The playlist is still on the channel. Got Rusty, who's 53 and still rides crutch rockets. 
Uh, Sid rides the Ducati 797 every day and even the cold, the joy and thrill of riding a motorcycle. You know what? I went out for a bike ride today. It was, uh, it was about eight degrees in Toronto. I had to go deposit a, a check. So couldn't do it on my phone. It's from a condo that I just sold. So I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to start up the car and drive to the bank. It's well above zero. It's sunny out. I'm just going to throw on a jacket, put the check in my pocket and ride my bike to the, uh, to the bank. And you know, when I say bike, not motorcycle, bicycle, I have a nice specialized bike. It's like a $1,200 bike rides beautifully. And I saw two motorcycles today and I was, you know, I was thinking to myself, that's, that's the way to do it. Riding motorcycles in Toronto in December, right? Fucking on. Uh, reading a thousand concessions as you talk about being interesting. Yeah. And Moff says you should be your own biggest critic. Absolutely. Hold yourself to higher standards. Always. Chris Amy, I am my biggest critic and I have been as long as I can recall. You know what? If there's, if there's one thing that you can do is be, I mean, you know, some guys are not going to like this and the inclusivity cloud and the, you know, the progressive crowd is not going to like it, but the world's gone soft. And if you go a little harder on yourself, you're not going to do yourself any damage. Promise you that you're not you're not made out of butter. You're not going to melt. Okay, be a little be a little harsher and, and judge yourself a little bit more, especially if you screw up a lot. All right, let's see what we got here in the private chat from you guys in the waiting area. Um, let's see, Austin, how to be patient, differentiate between real estate essential. Austin, Austin, where are you, Austin? All right, Austin, you're up, buddy. Hey, uh, can you hear me all right? Yep, yep. What do you got for me here? All right, cool. Um, uh, I'm a, uh, thanks for having me on. I've been watching for weeks, been trying to wait to get it live, but having karate and then class, I uh, haven't been able to. So now that I finally have time. Um, so one thing I've been working on, I've been watching you for about six months-ish. Uh, I've, read, I've read all of those stuff. Um, been watching all the rules of your previous podcasts like that, and trying to chase excellence and how to be patient with it um, would be my main thing. Like I've since March, I've lost around forty-five pounds, forty-six pounds. Um, Good for still you. What do you weigh right now? Uh, this morning I weighed one fifty-three point eight. And how tall are you? And uh, five seven. Okay, that's a decent amount. You're twenty two. You're starting to turn so, fat in the muscle, yeah. I bet. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and I've noticed that the my stomach keeps on getting tighter, so I just got to keep doing that until it gets where I want to be. Trying to aim for about twelve percent body fat. Okay. Um. All right. So so, uh, so what's the ask here? Because I mean, it says here in the private chat you're talking about uh, patient and chasing excellence. What do you mean by that? So. Like, I I know I'm only 22 and I have a lot of runway left to figure things out, but I often feel like I should be a lot farther than I am um, in terms of, like, making money and stuff like that. Um, I have about a year left in my IT degree, then I graduate, um, so uh, just trying to figure out, I guess, how to get ahead on that. Um, It only took out two years of loans, about 12 grand in debt. So I'm hoping to What's pay the end off goal here? Like, like lean into the future three to five years and, and tell me what your life looks like in, in three to five years. Uh, let's see. I would have a, a remote job so I can live wherever I want. I'd probably live either in West Virginia or Arizona, Nevada, two mm-hmm. radically different places. Um, I would be in the best shape I've ever been. I'd be closer to my, uh, blocks in, uh, karate um i wouldn't have uh, as much uh, social anxiety in terms of going out and approaching women um mm-hmm. but you uh, got some social anxiety still yeah. um yeah uh it, it's more in the trying to figure out where to go and well but once i'm actually in uh the situation i'm pretty fine uh i just finished um uh, Joe Navarro's uh, What Everybody is Saying mm-hmm. um, I have it in the back shelf there uh, thanks to your recommendation so I've been working on uh, uh, reading body language and just learning more social skills because I've been uh, socially stunted uh, growing up 
uh, always somewhat on the outskirts of ultra groups and stuff like that. So okay, so uh, so I mean, you've come to the space, you've you've consumed some of the red pill awareness. I'm looking at my other spokes: so looks, money, status, game, frame, and captivation. Mm-hmm. I see you've got a bow and arrow set, you know, on the wall over there. So it looks like you do some shooting sports, you know, something along that line. Mm-hmm. Um, I got to ask you yep. though, dude, like what's going on with the neck beard? Um, I've been trying to get it to grow in the, uh, in the cheeks. I've been using the derma roller recently, just trying to yeah, get yeah. it to fill in. Um, I'm planning on going to the barber this week to see how low they, that they should cut it. I, um, I would shave that thing off, uh, dude. It, it doesn't look good. It, like, you know, if you want to have the, like the confidence that you're looking for, like you have to start to develop a look, um, find a, find a popular icon, Hollywood figure, somebody that's, uh, you know, that's interesting, that's captivating, that has a following. You may have heard at some point in your life, Hey, you know, you look like so-and-so or you resemble so-and-so go for that look. Because I mean, right now the look that you're going for is you're going for that, like it, you know, neck beard look, right. Which is, you know, which is fine if you don't want to, you know, max out on the other spokes in your wheel. But I, mm. I'm assuming, you know, that you're here because you want to do the work. And I just got to point out the obvious because, I mean, guys in the comments are going to start to, like, you know, come at you on this, right? So you have to start to develop mm. a look that's going to be compelling and interesting. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you said you're 22, yeah. but yep. in the comments right now, guys, you tell him how old you think he looks, right? So just... Go ahead and just you know let him know what age you think he looks. But I'm wondering from your perspective to hear what you're saying. Like Moff saying here in the comments that a neck beard is a chick repellent. It basically is, right? And I'm not saying this to be you know disparaging to you, but it's like, dude, what I do is I hold up a mirror and I just point to the facts and I just say, hey, you know these things are in your blind spot. You need to take a look at them. Um, mm. I don't know if you can see yeah, the. Yeah, yeah. So what do you say to like? Make it shorter, or just shave get rid of it. All of just, it. Just shave it off. Like unless it fills in up over here, and you can make a nice, proper, full beard. Don't don't roll a beard. It's like, you know, the guys that like are losing their hair, and they just like grow it out long on one side and do a comb over or some shit like that. It's like, no, dude, just stop holding on a scrap. Shave it off, right? But I mean, if you look at the comments mm-hmm. right now, you're 22. We got 35. We got 34. We got 30. We got 35. 30 plus. 35. Honestly, bro, 29 is the youngest we got so far. So you're looking older than your age, right? Mm -hmm. You want, like, I'm assuming that you want to date women closer to your age instead of 29 or 35 year old single moms with three kids in tow from three different fathers. I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got to start acting as if, right? Like you got to look the part. We got Jaron in the chat. Neck beard Mm -hmm. does have to go. Chin strap might work, but it's still pushing it, right? You have to, you have to, I mean, if you want to rock facial hair, Rock a facial hair look that works for you. If it doesn't work for you, then move on from it, right? Like you have to know when to take it around behind the back of the bar and beat it with a stick and bury it six feet under and start over with something new. One of the things a lot of guys do when they come at me with coaching calls, you know, especially when it comes to business stuff, they're like, I've got this business, I've been running it for two or three years and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, okay, how much money does it make? Well, nothing yet. Well, how long have you been doing this? Well, you know, for the last 36, you have a hobby right? It's time for you to take that piece of shit around behind the back of the bar and kill it and bury it six feet under and be done with it. It's not working. Once you establish it's not working, of course, but right. But I mean, like what I'm saying here is, Mm -hmm. you know, you're looking to get some better results. And one of the most glaring things that, that, that I see that's holding you back is you have a look that's out of place, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're not Mm -hmm. like, Ugly guys don't have symmetrical eyes. One eye's higher than the other. The eyes are looking in different directions sort of thing, right? They've got like a cleft mm-hmm. lip or, or something that misshaping. You don't have scars on you or anything like that that I can see. So like mm-hmm. work with what you got to hone up on it. You're already going to the gym, so your body's going to change, right? Your body's improving. Mm-hmm. You got rid of the fat. You know, you're toning in the belly area. Your shoulders are going to broaden, right? You know, you start to get some shoulders that look good. You just have to keep going. Like, <laughs> sorry, I'm off saying I'm here. Yeah. So you've got the look that the internet memes are about, right? Like you ever see those memes where it's like that mm-hmm. guy with the neck beards yelling at the other guy that looks like me with the beard like this? Mm-hmm. This this conversation right now is literally those two characters, right? So mm-hmm. switch yeah. over to I've a side to that... Grow. Yeah, so yeah. Sw- switch over to a side that makes you more attractive, right? That gets you that look. Mm-hmm. You see okay. what I'm saying? Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I've been trying to... I wanted to fill in here because I was 
a couple well, of weeks ago. Well, it's going to grow or it's not like, going to oh, grow. I mean, if it's not going to grow there, then just move on from it. I mean, you know, try the derma roller if you want. You know, like that's one thing. Mm-hmm. Also, when you start lifting and fighting and all that sort of stuff like that and you start winning competition, testosterone goes up. One of the things that happens when testosterone goes up in your body, more body hair, more facial hair. So maybe it'll fill in later, you know, sort of thing. Mm-hmm. It may not. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe yeah. you're just predisposed not to have, you know, facial hair in that part of your face. Don't fight it, mm-hmm. you know. Move on from it. Okay. It's like those guys that are like, oh, I'm only okay. five foot four and I'm never going to be anybody and the girls won't like me, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, sure. I had a roommate that was like that height and he was a slayer, right? We used to call him Pocket Hercules. He was jacked, maxed out in every other area. Mm-hmm. And he did, you know, like he did the best that he, uh, he could, right? You don't have to worry about, you know, asking mm-hmm. questions like how do you be patient when she's an excellence and trying to differentiate. Like you said over here, how to, how to differentiate between realistic assessment and limiting beliefs. Start mm-hmm. acting as if. Go watch the movie Boiler Room. There's a really good scene in there with Ben Affleck talking to the new recruits. Have you ever seen it? Uh, no, I have not. Go get the movie Boiler Room. Rent it, buy it, whatever. doesn't matter. It's a great movie. It's, it's, it's really one of those movies that you probably watch more than one time, right? But you need to like understand the concept of acting as if before you're going to start to execute on it. It's like when you go to the dojo, you get yourself psyched up, right? You put on, you know, your gear, you, you, you know, you take off your shoes, you get yourself in the mindset, you know, there's some warm up activities, there's some cardio conditioning. And then that's when you start to engage in the hand to hand type of work, right? So you're acting as if before you even start to fight. You see what I'm saying? You need to do that with the other areas yeah. of your life. So that's why I'm using that example. And that's why I tell guys to go and learn how to fight is because that same concept can be applied in other areas of your life too, bro. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, makes sense. All right, mm-hmm. come back and give me yeah. an update in like you know a few months time, and let me know how you're making out. Right, you know, try to establish a look. You mm-hmm. know, do all those things that I talked about. Mm-hmm. All right, will do. Thanks all right, week. Austin. Thanks, buddy. Take care. All right, I am not going to soften things, dudes. I am not going to soften things. If you want rainbows and butterflies, you are going to have to go and listen to your mom. Ryan says, you got some good advice, Austin. I hope you take it. Keep on, keep on working out. Let's do it. All right, let's see what else we got here in a private chat. Um, we got some younglings in here today. Guys, this, this call-in segment is open to everybody. Young, old, man, woman, bring it. Whatever question you got. Sometimes you guys like to like come in afterwards. Yeah, 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 Rich, you're wrong about this, and I'm going to tell you why, and blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, dude, why don't you call in on the live show You know, with your better solution, right? Um, I am 20. Do you think people should focus on these skills? Kyle. Kai. Is it Kai? Kai. It's Kai. Kai, you're up, buddy. All right. Hey, Rich. How you doing? Good, man. You're 20. So what do you got for me? Yeah. So like I asked him the question, um, like there's seven things that you have here. Like, do you think that some things should be focused on more than others, like in different like stages of life? Like since I'm like 20, should I focus on certain things like more than, um, like, for example, like status, like status will be like acquired over time. So, so do you think that more comes like later on? No, no, no. Because I mean, like spokes are spokes, right? You need them all to operate the wheel properly, right? Okay. Here's, here's where you, where you start to decipher between, well, should I spend my energy on this? Yes or no. It's, is it a weakness? Now there's a difference between, is it a weakness and maxing out on money or looks or, you know, being captivating, right? Like, not being captivating is not the same thing as a weakness. You know, like a, like a weakness for me, for, for example, um, I can't draw for shit. Like, look at my artwork. I Like, if you asked me to paint the Picasso, it would, it would literally, or like a picture of a person, this is how my pictures of, of, of people look, right? Like this. That's my artwork. I don't know if you can see it. It's a stick man, okay? I have no artistic skills whatsoever. Um... I tried to learn how to play the guitar. I cannot play the guitar for the life of me, all right? Did the lessons, got the uh, Rocksmith uh, thing with the guitar and all that stuff and tried to learn it all, did it for months on end. I just suck at it. That's a weakness. Now, I can keep working on a weakness like that, but all I'm going to have is a really strong weakness, okay? All of these things, all of these spokes of the wheel, looks, money, status, game, captivation, all these things, that's not like, you know, one skill, like, you know, you can be captivating on a motorcycle, you can be captivating on a horse, you can be captivating in a supercar, you can be captivating 
um, knowing the best hiking trails that take you to the hidden waterfall that you bang Becky behind, you know, sort of thing. You see what I'm saying? Like you can be captivating in any number of ways, right? So when you're talking about weaknesses, they're, they're all equally important, right? Every spoke in a wheel is equally important to make the wheel operate properly and roll. And all this really means is it just brings you to the point of self-actualization, like being the, being the best version of yourself that you can possibly be, right? Gotcha. So what do you think that, um, let's say that someone maximized all of these um, spokes, what would that look like? Like, do you think that there's like a general picture that winning, like winning this, winning the game, like looks like? Like, well, not to put too fine of a point on it, but me, right? Like, I've, I've pretty much maxed out in every area of my life. I can't mm -hmm. get like, you know, aside from getting a hair transplant or something stupid like that, which I think would be retarded for a guy my age, and I don't have the uh, like the hair density, mm -hmm. right? Well, why don't you get a hair transplant? <laughs> no, dude. This is this is this is my look. Shaved head with a dope beard, right? Mm -hmm. The chicks that dig it really dig it. The ones that don't, I don't give a fuck because there's plenty of the ones that dig it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So to not put too fine of a point on it, like you like you get what I'm saying, right? Yeah, okay. Okay. That pretty much answered my question though. Thank you. All right. You Good. got it, buddy. Take care, man. Me too. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, we got a question about entrepreneurship here from Steve, and it looks like he bounced. He's not there anymore. Okay, let's see what we got here. We got uh, Jenna. I wonder if this is the same Jenna that I had on with Sterling Cooper. Uh, she says, I honestly wish men would work harder on developing an identity. All right, Jenna, what do you got for me? Hey, Rich, it is me. That is the same one. How you doing? Not too bad. How you doing, sir? Good, good. So what do you got for me tonight here? Um, I was actually just sitting here with a glass of Macallan and watching Yellowstone. And then I looked and you were live. And I was thinking about, have you ever seen the show? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a great show. Amazing show. I would really suggest you guys watch it. Um, what I'm finding Why would you suggest that these guys watch it, if you can be specific? Cause um, because I know why I watch it. Oh, yeah. Um, I think it's it's the fact that it's the number one show on Amazon should tell you that the world is actually telling you a, about manhood in a way that is counterproductive. They're telling you they want you to be more feminine, but it's the number one show on Amazon and Look it's nothing watching. but masculinity. It's a show about cowboys that like bare knuckle beat the shit out of each other hardcore. I'm Someone not going to spoil it for you. Every episode. Watch it. Trust me. <laughs> It's in, and also it shows you what manhood looks like. Correct. Um, y the reason I said that in the chat that I think men should focus more on their identity is two things. One, for those of you who watch the show, you get to see the contrast between Casey, which is one of the sons who's like a former military guy who has integrity and dignity, John Dutton, the father, who's like the typical patriarch, and Jamie, who's the cowardly son. And mm. Jamie is what a lot of guys accidentally become when mm -hmm. they take your talking points and they don't actually take the time to interpret them properly. So for example, a couple, uh, probably last year, I actually went out on a date with a guy who turned out to be a follower of yours. Okay. And it was so unfortunate because he mentioned your name and he literally told me that I needed to, it was something along the lines of staying in his frame or I need to, um, he used some of the language that you use verbatim and it was so unfortunate because yeah, he did it wrong. He did it completely wrong. So what he did. So the reason I say that is identity is one of the most important things that a man can have because you just end up becoming whatever you need to become in the moment to get what you want, but you don't become anything other than that. And mm -hmm. you end up becoming a very feckless cowardly person like Jamie. Like if anyone who's watched the show, you know that Jamie, the son literally just goes with whatever everybody else says he doesn't actually interpret what's going on around him so for the people who are followers yeah. of you um un listen to what rich is saying i don't agree with everything that rich is saying but i understand there's so many men that need guidance and i think it's lovely that you're saying it but at the same time listen to what he's saying but learn to interpret Learn to learn to apply it to your circumstances or your situation without regurgitating it. You just become a parrot. And girls, because we know about like the manosphere, we can tell that 
you're doing that and there's nothing more pathetic than looking at a dude and going you got your identity off of youtube right yeah i shouldn't absolutely. know i shouldn't you know that you follow this channel you don't try to lecture women on the red pill guys you don't try to tell her to be in your frame you you act the part you right. you you become it okay and it's just communicated to her by way of your choices, your action, your availability, and your schedule, all of those things, if you see what I'm saying. And to the point of Yellowstone, as Jenna's talking about it, she mentioned Jamie. There's another character in the series, her name's Beth, which happens to be Jamie's sister. Jamie's sister runs him into the ground. She is, she's basically kryptonite to the guy. She doesn't know, like he doesn't know how to handle it, right? And she despises him because he's a weak man. And all of these characters in the show, like you'll come to understand it if you watch it. I know some of you guys watch it and some of you have never heard of it, but it's worth checking out. Jenna's making a good point with that. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. Um, I just had one more thing to say. Um, yeah, go ahead. Um, for those of you who don't have good relationships with women or haven't had good relationships with your mothers or whatever the case may be, um, you really need to make a conscious effort to, to, to kind of keep in mind that some of you are actually turning into the person you despise. Um, I've encountered that as well. Men who have had issues. I met, I met a, a guy who's actually a police officer. He told me flat out his mother was a hoe. Um, that she was she was loose when he was a child, and every woman now has to prove to him that she's not, you know, some horrible whatever. If you have a problem with women, it's something that you need to work out because the same guy. Or, or another guy can have the same interaction with that woman and get completely different results. It means you're applying something wrong to that situation or you lack discernment. You can't stop and assess which woman is good for you and you're counting on the woman to be the person who tells you what is best for you. And that's not, that's not really how you function as an adult. Correct. Thanks, Jenna. No worries. Have a All good right. one. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah. Do not try to red pill women, guys. <laughs> I I always find that's funny. You know, when I have women that mention how they come across my material, they're like, oh, I, I was dating this guy and we watched your stuff together or, or like something along that line. And it's like, women just want guys to get it. Okay. They just want you to, they want to be able to look up to a giant. They want to be able to, they don't want to like be lectured on how frame works. They just want to be in your frame. Right. So it's incumbent on you just to act the part and do the things. That's what game is, right? Like that's what gaming a woman is. It's not a inherently good or bad thing. It is what it is. It's just what they respond to. They're not going to respond to, well, let me tell you about why you should be in my frame because there's this guy, Rich Cooper on YouTube. You should check out his channel, by the way, and he has a book and go read it. By the time these women hear that, they're not interested in dating you anymore. They're interested in me now because now they're because now they're coming across the source of the actual material. So don't don't try to red pill chicks. It's a waste of your time, guys. Miguel, I'm 40 years old, healthcare professional, very decent job, average looks, but my game sucks. Any advice on how or where I can learn game? Peace out. Miguel, why don't you hop on to the stream? The uh, uh, call in and ask a question live stream yard link is at the very top. I'll, I'll put you at the front of the line because you just dropped a, uh, a super. Um, Got to gotta chop up some of these ideas sometimes, guys. I, I just can't give you like a, a quick vanilla answer to everything. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Comes possible. AC Doyle. AC Doyle, do you have a camera? I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure what I'm dealing with here. What do we got here? We'd like to talk about. Da, 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 da. Okay. All right. Let's give AC Doyle a shot at this. You're up, buddy. All right. Hi, Rich. Uh, I've been watching you for, I'd say, about three years on and off, but really started watching this year, so right. I appreciate your work. Um, my question is, that, so I'm Jewish, and I kind of have a dating situation, and okay. uh, I don't know if you know that in the Jewish religion, uh, I don't know, my, my dad's really into that. You have to, they, they want you to marry Jewish, and it's very traditional. Mm -hmm. You're so, the most un-Jewish looking guy that I've ever met, though. I mean, I've got Jewish friends that are, you know, in law and in, and in school and all that sort of stuff. But I mean, like, you look Indian. Like, you look like you're you're from, oh, India, I look from Indian. Pakistan. Yeah. I think. I mean, maybe without my glasses, I don't know. I look maybe different. Where's your family know. from? Uh, my mom's uh, Jewish Iraqi, and then my dad's uh, got Ashkenaz and 
oh, okay. a little bit gotcha. Sephardic. Gotcha. So, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm familiar with it. You know, I got some friends that are Jewish, so yeah, they they want you to marry a Jewish girl, a nice Jewish girl, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's not the issue, but and I have other, you know, options too, but okay. th the main issue is, so I came, uh, I'm, I guess I'd say I'm a little lucky because we have a family business, etc. So, mm -hmm. I helped my dad with his business. So, I, I was coming to London mm -hmm. from uh, Geneva. Are you talking London, England or London, Ontario? L L London, England. Okay. And so, the, that's where the girl lives. Uh, I'm friends with the girl's father and my dad was, you know, 20 years ago, friends with the mm -hmm. girl's father. She comes from a good family. Mm -hmm. And anyways, uh, so, she's all cool with me. The dad gives me her number. I, you know, text her, start texting her. You know, I don't, I, I'm, I don't know what you think about texting games, like, you know, not reading, you know, m making it s seem like you're busy. And, Anyways, so she she responds back. Uh, we have an how should I say we have a appointment. I say I'm gonna be in London next week. I have to do stuff for my dad. Mm -hmm. And then what ends up happening is so we meet up. First day she says first day when I arrived, I'm like, can, hey, can we meet now in two hours? And then she's like, oh no, uh, I, I have my finals. So second day I I try again. We meet. Mm -hmm have a about an hour and a half it went pretty well i'd say Hang on, so she, you uh, gave her a two hour window to meet with you like can no, i no. can i see you in two hours time basically is what you said yeah 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 that, and, that, uh, that's that's generally not practical for women like they're not dudes like you have to understand like when a woman is going to meet a guy for a date generally speaking yeah. not always but generally speaking there's a shower there's hair there's makeup there's clothing like they're not just gonna like show up with what they're wearing generally speaking they're not right yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I totally understand that. I mean, I kind of thought that, uh, I don't know, I didn't want to make it seem like I have all the time in the world, you know? Right, and you shouldn't have all the time in the world for stuff like this. Yeah, so any, anyway, so we end up meeting for two hours the next day, like mm -hmm. we, an hour and a half, went pretty well. She kisses me on, the thing I thought was kind of weird is she, I, I kind of like female body behavior, they can, you know, like if they're putting their legs towards you and stuff like that, sometimes mm -hmm. it shows interest or she's doing her hair yeah you know in front of me and so anyways after that she tries to pay i don't know if it was being polite but she's tr i asked my daddy he, he didn't know but she tries to pay for the bill and i'm like no 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 i got the bill mm -hmm. so after that walker she has to go walker uh she gives me two kisses on the cheek when i thought i was just gonna get a hug mm -hmm. and and then the next day she says okay the next day i'll have more time uh, maybe, but towards the end of the day. So I asked her, but she she tries, but then we have Shabbat, so she couldn't, she had a Shabbat dinner. Mm -hmm. And then sad, she was leaving, I knew from the beginning of the trip that she was leaving to Milan to see her, she's, her parents are divorced like mine, to see her, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I should say her mom. Mm -hmm. And what ends up happening is this, she, uh, uh, Saturday she says, okay, let's try to meet Saturday. Uh, didn't respond for the whole day, but then she keeps texting so, me back. So I'm okay, like, why so, is she? Okay, yeah, so let me just stop yeah. for a sec. Like when you're saying things like, let's try to meet for Saturday, like she's saying this to you. Uh, yeah. That's not, that's not how you set up dates. You're the one that has to take the lead. So it's Shabbat, you know, you're doing your Shabbos night and all that sort of stuff, right? Then it's like, okay, you know what? Yeah. We're going to meet Saturday at three o'clock at this coffee shop. And I want you to wear that black dress. Okay. Now you might not want to feel like maybe you don't feel comfortable t telling her what to wear sort of thing but at least pick the yeah, venue I don't know her well at least pick the venue pick the time and tell her to meet you there at, at that time because when you leave the ball at her court and she's like well let's try to meet on on saturday you're not leading right oh well you've got to take I the lead on this well i did actually like so the first day i, I i've heard you talk about this and other guys uh, i said look can we meet at this uh cafe and she's like, yeah, sure, we can meet there. And then uh, she says, oh, I'm coming late for my class. Can we meet at the, the cafe closest to my house? And Otherwise, I'll be late. And because of that, I was like, okay, fine. I don't know if that was a good move. Well, so, so let's talk about frame, right? And I've covered this, I've covered this yeah. in a video, and I believe I also mentioned it in my book. Have you read my book? Uh, no, but I, I watch a lot of your videos. I, okay. Read the book, okay? Or just listen to it, you know, just get the audible version. Um, when when you meet up for a date, you've got, okay, you can't really, okay, so you've got here, this is where you live, and this is where she's at, okay? Yeah. The closer you go to where she's at, the more likely it is that you're going to be in her frame. 
if you can get her to come to your place, that's the best scenario, right? Like top tier guys, like, you know, the chads out there that are out dating, like guys like Jaron, you know, for example, you know, it's in the chat and, and Moff, girls will come to their place, right? Like they'll travel all the way to go to their place. Meet in the middle if you have to, but if you're going to her backyard, like if you're going to like the coffee shop at the bottom of her building, chances are you're probably going to be in her frame. That's not the end of the world, right? I mean, okay, you're going out with her. I mean, you know, you're trying to tie it into her, when her class is over and maybe you're in the area, maybe you're not. But just understand, like, the further you have to travel, the more time you spend to, like, go and see her for a date, the chances are you're going to be in her frame. The more you yeah. can bring her to your neck of the woods or meet her somewhere in the middle that's more convenient for you, the more likely it is that you're going to be able to control the frame of that dynamic, right? Not the end of the world, you know, like I said, but it's just something that, you know, the red pill aware guys understand when they're, you know, thinking about game and frame and all that sort of stuff. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I totally get it. I mean, wh what I did on set, uh, when I asked, when she said, okay, let's meet Saturday, I said, oh, why don't we go at four o'clock or five o'clock to the Natural History Museum in London? Mm -hmm. But then she didn't reply for the whole day. And then later on, she said, oh, sorry, Alex, because I was, uh, uh, me you know, I had to go get my test and my luggage. I wasn't able you know to meet. Who, so she kept replying back. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Do you know yeah. who uh, Cindy Lauper is? Yeah. The singer, the 80s singer. Yeah. Girls, girls just want to have fun. Yeah. She's, she's in school. She's, she's writing notes all day. She's all like cooped up. You know, if you want like, you know, this comes back to the being, you know, be captivating sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. Maybe she's an art history nerd. I don't know her, but generally speaking, you know, you want to entice her out on a date with something that's going to, that's going to keep her captivated and go into a museum, unless she's an art history nerd or like, you know, whatever it is that she's specializing she in. Said, probably she said isn't she the best museums. move. Yeah. What, what, see what, see what women say and what they do are very yeah. different things, right? You know, she'll say, well, I don't like guys like that pointing to Chad Thundercock over there. But given the opportunity, she'll roll around in the hay with them if nobody finds out. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. these these are just general predispositions of what women are kind of all about. And, yeah, you've watched my video. No, you haven't read my book. Um, how old are you? I'm 22. And where do you live? I live primarily in Geneva. Okay. Switzerland. You're, you're but, but, I mean, you're educated in uh, where, like, the I U.S.? or. I grew up in the U.S. Yeah, I was okay, born yeah. in Switzerland. Okay, yeah. good. Okay, so so like you're traveled, right? I mean, obviously your family's put together. You've got money. You know, you can go to and from London, and, you know, sort of thing. Um, I'm assuming this yeah. is the only girl that you're dating. Uh, no, I mean I have other girls I've gone on dates with, and you know, I guess spinning. Plates You've been on around. dates with other girls, but this is the only girl yeah. right now that you're giving attention to. S seriously, yeah, yeah. Because so, I'm trying. To, I, I'm not trying to have a. You're trying yeah, to have right. a girlfriend, kind of a long a wife. term, long term to eventually wife. So I can't okay. really like go sleep with her the second okay. date, right? Fair enough, got it. But yeah, here's the thing though, AC guys like you, you know, they come here, they look for for help, they get some help, they learn, you know, what women start to respond to. But guys like you, like if you don't go right down the rabbit, rabbit hole. You, guys like you will end up in a position like your dad, you know, where you'll end up getting divorced later on down the road. And you may not have access to kids that you thought that you were going to be able to spend time with. Guys like you tend to get destroyed by women is basically what I'm saying, right? You're not a strong, like, leader kind of guy that a woman's going to want to enter the frame of. Ch like, like, these boss girls that go to universities to get degrees and, you know, chase some sort of something or other, like some sort of clout. They yeah. they routinely run guys like you, you know, is basically what I'm saying. So, again, you know, what I do is I hold up a mirror and I just reflect back things that are in your blind spot. And the biggest thing that I see missing here from you is not when do I schedule the date or do I go to her dorm, you know, at the bottom of her building because her class ends and it's a tight schedule. It's it's none of those things. Like, sure, those things might matter a little bit. But the thing that matters the most is you're really not the best version of yourself. Okay. How can I be the best version of myself? Well, you should start by reading my book. <laughs> okay. No, no. Yeah, yeah. But what do you mean? Like, get, like I get the work out more? So, uh, so, okay. So let's do it this way. So, so because we've identified these seven spokes. So on a scale of one to 10, how red pill aware are you? I'd say about 7.5. Okay. 
on a scale of one to ten in the looks department, where are you? I'd say without my glasses, I'd give myself an eight, seven. Okay, but I mean, like you need your glasses to see, so it's not like you can throw them away, right? Well, I, you wear I have contacts. Con yeah, I wear contacts. I just have my. Uh, I don't know if you can see me here. I just have take it off when I'm about to sleep because I'm okay. still in London. So. In the money department, you're 22. Where are you at? I I'm, I don't want to say, but I'm well off because of my family and because of stuff I've done myself. Good. Okay. So. Status. Do people look at you as a guy that they want to be around? Like you're a man of status in your social circle? I, I think so. Okay. I think so. I'm not like, you know, Brad Pitt, but yeah. Game, I'm going to give you a 3 out of 10. Frame, 3 or you know, two to three out of 10. And from the captivation point of view, what do you do for fun? Uh, I surf. Well, I grew up in Hawaii. So I surf, I play polo. Uh, and what else do I do? I mean, sometimes I play tennis, but not like professionally. Okay, but you can't surf in Geneva and you can't really surf in London, right? So do you play polo so on I, a regular basis? Like you're on a polo team? During the summer, yeah. Yeah? Are you the captain of the team or? No. No, okay. So... So that's interesting, right? Like, you know, playing yeah. playing polo is interesting. Like, it's a very expensive sport. Um, it is a sport of royalty, you know? Like, if you've spent any time, you know, watching or learning anything about, you know, the royal families or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. So that's some good thing. So you're you're doing okay. You're doing okay, but, you, but you've got room to improve in frame, game, status. You can probably improve a little bit. I understand your family's got money, but you have to have money yeah. yourself. That, that may move back and forth. I don't know what your business is, is like. Your looks are, are pretty good. I mean, um, it looks like you're nearsighted, right? Uh, yeah. What's so your I script? Have problems seeing f uh, so I have minus 6 and minus 6.5 on my right. And, so minus 6 on my left. Minus. Okay. And have you asked them if they can do like a laser eye correction? Because that's pretty pretty like easy to do. Yeah, but I have – I forget what it's called. Like a um, – not a myopia. I forget what it's called. It's st st stigmatism or something like that. Stigmatism. Okay, so they can't correct yeah. it with laser? Yeah, that's what okay. the doc eye doctor said. Okay, fair enough. So, I mean, uh, but I, I wear like, contacts in the day. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if you're cool with sticking your finger in your eye, like personally, like I can't do it. Like I just, I just can't get to the place yeah. where I just take the glasses off and stick my finger in my eye and do a contact. I'm not down with that. <laughs> but, I mean, there's yeah. like clear lens replacement, which is an option for me, but it's. But, but it's a lot more invasive than laser surgery where they just cut a flap laser and put it back on, right? So whatever you can do to improve your looks, I mean, if you can improve the looks of masculinity and strength, I mean, you already play polo, which is which is a, a fairly physical sport, you know, if I'm not mistaken. Like, I know you're riding a horse, but to ride a horse and swing that damn thing and, you know, do all yeah, this, like, it's, it's, it's quite a bit of work, yeah? Yeah, it is. It, you don't it, look like you're fat. Like, cardio. your face looks thin, so that's good. Right. Problem problem is, is I have a, a high metabolism. I'm an ectomorph, so I that's weigh about an like excuse, 100. Dude. Yeah, that's just an excuse. I like know. I used to say the exact same thing. Oh, I'm an ectomorph. I can't put on muscle. But guess what? As soon as I started yeah. eating more and lifting weights, I went from 160 pounds. Like I'm like I'm just over six foot two. So I went from about 160 pounds all the way up to about 190. The most I weighed before I got into TRT was about 203, 204, and I was ripped. Like I look like a small uh, or a smaller Arnold Schwarzenegger, like the exact same frame, broad shoulders, narrow waist. I mean, if you can get to like a swimmer's physique, right, that's going to be very, very attractive to women. And you're going to become more of a natural, right? Like you're just going to, you're just going to be more comfortable in your skin. You're not going to be asking questions like, well, where do I meet her? Do I meet her over here? Do I meet her over here? And, you know, like you're just going to take the lead. You're going to say, woman, we're meeting here at this date. And hopefully you're going to get to the point where you're going to say, and I want you to wear this. Okay. Right. Okay. And then, and then I have a, well, I, I was going to add, I know you're talking, I've seen videos of you talking about like envy and things like that and yeah. who to cut away. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was thinking if you, have you ever heard of the concept of the evil eye? It's like a superstition. Uh, my mom has an evil eye thing. It's, it's like a Greek Egyptian thing. That's the circle, you know, the, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but yeah. it's basically the evil eye. They hang it on the door to keep evil spirits away. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's not actually like even Jesus talks about it throughout m many cultures. It's, uh, talked about. So I don't know. I was thinking if you look into that, it's a very interesting concept, uh, because it talks so, about being careful of envy and 
Yeah, yeah. So I did a, a cast on my channel. Just search for Entrepreneurs in Cars Envy. It's really good. It's one of my favorite ones that I've ever done. If you haven't seen it, it's it's, it's probably one of the most important ones. I would I would say I'll probably have to re- recap it again. But uh, hey, listen, AC, you sound Thank like you. you're a good guy, and I think yeah. that you're going in the right direction. The one thing that I would caution you uh, from is that you're still plugged into a into a very comforting lie. It's just be a nice guy and get introduced to the nice Jewish girl, take her out on dates and kind of like, you know, schmooze her and then let's start dating and make her my girlfriend and then have family and babies and sort of thing like that. And that's fine. Yeah. That that worked a hundred years ago when checks and balances were in place from family and from society. But we live in a very, very different time today. And no, no, I know. you know, like I'm saying this from a cautionary perspective. If you want to have the best life that you possibly ca- can have and you want to be with a woman and have kids and that sort of stuff, if that's part of your objective, if that's in the agenda, spend less time plugged into the comforting lies of what religion has force fed you and understand that that's a bit of a fairy tale. That's not how the world is going to work on a long-term basis if you don't recognize game, frame, and what women truly respond to and what keeps them, you know, desiring you over a long period of time you i mean you probably know a lot of divorced families my 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 parents are divorced and the girls parents are actually divorced but yeah yeah, yeah i do well you know 50 percent of the time marriages end in divorce right and uh um, yeah you know i cover yeah. the stat in my book but they've but they've collected data on couples that have been dating for a long period of time and these are mostly like plugged in sort of like blue pill beta males you know with women that just sort of run their lives and they've beta ties them sort of thing but after about, I think it's 7.5 years was the average amount of time. The amount of people that were able to report that, that they still loved each other was something like 12%. The amount of people after that same period of time that reported that they were still obsessed with one another, like a state of bliss, you, you know, essentially, was less than 2%, yeah. right? Now, you can improve those odds dramatically. And I'm going to tell you this. I mean, if you're going to have kids in today's world with hostile, you know, family law, like I have a lot of clients and I have friends that live in the UK. So let's say that you wife up this girl in London and you live in the United Kingdom and you run your business there or whatever. That's a very hostile country towards fathers. And if she decides at some point after the kids are out of the way that you're no longer serving her because of Brefault's law, like, are you familiar with Brefault's law? No, I'm not. Okay. So you have to go deeper down the rabbit hole, right? But if my dad actually, that you're no, sorry. Sorry, my dad and my mom. There, there was a, t- a period of like eight years where I couldn't see my dad because of the laws in Hawaii, divorce laws in Hawaii. Yeah. So, so, yeah. I mean, I know. Would you want to go through that? You know, as a father. Um, I mean, I, the good the good thing is, and I can tell if a girl is, you know, like a hoe or conservative. She seems pretty conservative. You know, she's not like a rabbi's. Uh, daughter but i can't like, i can't tell you how yeah. many women how many guys that i've talked to going through the divorce machine reported that they married the the perfect conservative religious wife yeah only 7 12 14 years down the road after the kids are out of the way and she's got her job now she's back in the workforce she's cut her hair short dyed it blue you know put on about 85 pounds and only votes for <laughs> socialist you know type of agendas now and she doesn't need no man but you got a lot of yeah. money and she can yeah. get that money because she's got the kids now, right? She goes for custody. Well, she, she, she comes from a good family, but yeah, yeah. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. The thing that you got to understand is a woman, well, look, Moff just put it in the, the comment. A woman always reserved the right to change her mind at any given time. So the woman that yeah. you're with today is not going to be the woman you're with 5, 10, 12, 15, 20 years down the road, right? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So don't, so don't bank on, she comes from a good family. And just say, oh, you know, she comes from a good family. She's cute enough. So let's put a ring on it and make some babies, right? You can't, you can't rely on the old world order. That's an old social contract that most yeah. guys that subscribe to it, you know, they come from this beta factory of all these narratives. And it's like, okay, and if I'm just a nice enough guy and I just, you know, go to her to the date and, you know, pay for everything and sort of thing, she's just going to respect and value me forever and ever until kingdom come. It doesn't work that way. So it's just a cautionary warning. I'm going to, I'm going to recommend again, read my book. Okay. And just, you know, marinate on it and just understand. I'm not saying, you know, turn into an asshole. Like, I'm not saying, like, start banging no, no, I get it. 20, I get you know, 20 women at the same time and dating a bunch of women. But all I'm saying is 
unplug from this comforting lie that you're living right now because it's not going to serve you into this relationship as you get older. The the one eye is, you know, yeah. There's there's really a lot going on there that you're going to run into. Okay. And then last thing I was going to ask you is... Uh, you know what, uh, AC? I've got yeah. a bunch of other people waiting. Okay. You, you've got okay. money. Yeah. You know, you can book me for a private coaching call if you want. Okay? Okay. Thank Thanks, you, Thanks, buddy. Thank Take you. care. Bye-bye. I'm just trying to make sure that I move it along. Like, I'm not trying to be a dick here because I got a bunch of other people waiting and I want to get to a, at least one more call here. Um, let's see what we got. I'm going to give... Uh, Brady looks interesting. What do you got for me in the chat here, Brady? Huge fan, fun. In and... Okay, let's let's give Brady a shot here. All right, what do you got for me, buddy? Uh, all right, Rich. Um, so my main struggle is I live in, like, a retirement town, and there's, like, you convinced me to buy a motorcycle, to be honest, and okay. I, I'm very grateful for you having me on the show, of course. Um, I just don't know what to do. I, I was, like, thinking to myself, and I'm like, wow, I'm not an interesting guy. All I do is go to the gym. I work at a supplement store. I'm actually working right now, so if I disappear, it's no disrespect. It's because I got a customer, and I Do love you. Live Florida or something? No, I I live in uh, Idaho, and it's a retirement community that you live in. Yeah, so it's like it's just like Florida, actually. So a lot mm -hmm. of people go back and forth for like summer. They'll come over to like Idaho so where I live. So if it's a terrible dating market, what are you doing there? It's like <laughs> I'm trying to get out. Yeah, you know, if you want to, you know, if you want to catch fish, and you have a fish finder on your boat, and you realize there's mm -hmm. no fish there, then move the boat somewhere else where there's fish. Yeah, yeah, right. So, so you're, tr tr I'm going to do this in quotations. You're trying to get out. So, what are you doing to try to get out, man? I'm trying to get NASM certified so I can be like a personal trainer and just move and uproot to somewhere completely else. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to, but. You know, I'm I'm 21, and like I'm not gonna lie, a lot of it scares me, and I'm just trying to stay committed and focused for it. Lean into the fear, man. <laughs> the fear. Hey, listen, I'm not even kidding. Like, lean into the fear. Like, the dark areas that you're afraid of, mm -hmm. there's something there you got to work on, right? Yeah. You don't have the money to leave. Like, what's stopping you? Are you afraid you're gonna leave your family? Is your mom gonna cry if you disappear? Like, what's up? Um, I guess it's just. I don't know where there's so many options to move to and it's just like I think it's that paradox of so many options that I don't know what to do mm -hmm. and I have a really good gig right now and it's like you know I, my, we live in like we're surrounded by some college towns so my buddies get girls and like you know I try I'm just how far away are the college towns uh, I'm actually in one right now they're like 40 minutes away with the snow you know okay Sorry, because I mean, you said you're in a retirement community, but then you said you're in a college town. So are you, well, are you I, in a college I, town? I drive. I'm, I'm, I get paid to drive to the college town to work. Okay. So what's wrong with the girls at the college? Um, It's actually a really funny story. So I actually matched with one on Tinder, and like we were drinking, and like she just kicked me out in the middle of the night, and I was with my buddy, and she had a friend, and I thought it was good, but they just kicked us out like at one in the morning. Why? And like I was like... Well, I mean, I think I messed up. You know, I don't blame them. You know, what did you do? um, I don't know if it was something I specifically did, but the friend was like suddenly like, "Hey, I want to hang out with other boys," and I'm reading the book, uh, "The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F," and I was like, "Take responsibility. I should have known these girls sucked. You know, I should have." Have you read my book? Yeah, I loved your book. I've recommended it to all my friends. I've actually yeah. given a copy away to my buddies. Okay. Unplugged Alpha. Yeah, like what. You know, the medium's a message. If she tells you to leave or or she says that she wants to spend time with other boys, mm -hmm. like now like now she's literally being overt about it. She's like, Brady, get the F out of here, right? Like you're cramping yeah, my stuff. Yeah. I and gotta make room very... for some new chat coming in. Yeah. And like my buddy and I were talking about it because, you know, we were we were all drinking and it happened very quickly. And like, you're right. I should have, there should have been a sign and I should have saw it. Yeah. Well, you're about six foot tall is what it said in the comments. What yep. do you weigh right now? I'm 270, 10.8% body fat. And I'm you're right now trying to quit it. 10.8% body fat at 270. Yeah. No, you're not. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually like a huge guy. Like, you know, I'm. it's kind of hard. I'm barrel chested. No, I did dude, an in body not, test. There, there's, there's no way that you're 10% body. Do you have visible no, abs? No, 20%, 20 my bad, 20%. Yeah, okay. My, okay, so my you're goal is 10%. Body, Okay, yeah. So you're yeah. so you're carrying body fat, right? Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, get, my goal get is get rid 10. of that. 
get mm -hmm. get rid of the body fat like I, like yep. at at 12 percent 12 11 percent abs start mm -hmm. to pop right yep yep so you know get down to a health like you know what man like for a guy like me you know at my age it's a lot of work <laughs> It's a lot yeah. more, like when I was your age, I could smoke a joint, pound back a protein <laughs> shake and eat a bag of yeah. Doritos and wake up in the morning sexy as hell, right? Still wrecked. <laughs> it, did, yeah. it, it didn't matter what I ate. You know, as long as I worked out and I slept, it didn't matter what I ate, right? But yeah. like, I mean, you know, Moff's in the comments right now saying it, but like underneath that fat that's on your cheeks right now, there's a, mm -hmm. probably a handsome guy, right? Yeah, right. so, yeah. I mean, you know, when you start to like chisel off some of that extra weight, you're just going to be naturally more attractive to women. You want to get better results mm -hmm. with them and you want them to engage with you in mm -hmm. intimacy. Like you got to give them something to, you know, sink their teeth into you because yeah. women are spoiled for choice, dude. Like, like, yeah. they, like their phone is literally a box of dicks. Like all they have to do is <laughs> open it up. It's like, oh, let's get rid of this guy and we're going to call this guy over. And mm -hmm. even if she's a five out of the 10, dudes mm -hmm. will come over, right? Yeah, so you've got to be that. like like better than that. Like on a scale of one to ten, like where would you rate yourself right now? I'd put myself like a four or three. Yeah. So why are you even messing with chicks? I mean, if you read my book, you know that I say not to bother if you're under a seven. Yeah, and I actually was thinking about deleting Tinder and all that good stuff. I, I, you know, okay. I, 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 mean, I started. Listen, like a, I'm not like, saying don't try. Like I'm not saying mm -hmm. don't game women. I'm not saying like don't approach a girl that you're attracted mm -hmm. to. But what I'm yeah. saying though is that you're not going to win as often as you like, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, you want to get better results with women. You're a younger guy. Like women have a lot of patience for young, good-looking guys mm -hmm. with a plan. Yeah. Okay. You don't even have to have money. I mean, you, you could be 20, 22 and broke as shit, but if you look like <laughs> yeah. Chad Thundercock, she's going to be all over you like a fat kid on cake. Now, mm -hmm. a guy like me, I can't have no money and a plan, right? Okay. So, you know, it's different as you get older. So don't mm. don't worry about, you know, the girls and the money and, you know, how do I chase a success sort of thing like that. Mm -hmm. If I were you, dude, like I would just get out of your own way. I mean, you know, maybe like uprooting from where you're at and getting really mm. uncomfortable with your life and moving to a different city that's in a climate that you like. Yeah. Probably with more, you know, female options that are not from I like I don't know what the girls look like in Idaho. Like are they hot or are they pretty? We're nice? known as the ugliest state, dude. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we have foreign exchange students coming over here and asking me why they look like dudes. All right, it's yeah. I would, yeah. dude, like I would just get it, get the fuck out of the state. I mean, you, okay, you, like just like just get uncomfortable. You're not in mm -hmm. school. I'm not in school. I decided to invest in stocks and stuff. Okay, so get out of the state, move somewhere that is mm -hmm. going to be different for you, where the women are more attractive in a climate that's probably warmer than Idaho. Get rid of that body fat, you know, start yep. to look like the Chad and then work on the other areas of the spokes of the wheel that I talked about. But I mean, like you're talking about mm -hmm. doing work in a place where women aren't even worth messing with. Like I wouldn't even, I yeah. wouldn't even get out of bed in the morning to deal with women that look like that. <laughs> yeah. like, okay. Are we talking like the people of Walmart memes here? Yeah, actually kind of a little bit. Yeah, They're a little skinnier dude, dude. and like, it's not, it's not even worth it. Yeah. Uh, one last question before I head out. Should I Quickly, yeah. like Go abandon ahead. all my original friends or should I, cause I have a, I have a couple of buddies that want to uproot with me and like, it, should so, I avoid them? okay. So when it comes to friends, they're mm -hmm. either, a, they're either along with you for the ride. Mm -hmm. They're either an anchor or a sale. Yeah. So you need to identify like, are these losers that sit around doing nothing, stuffing their face with Cheetos and they're 400 pounds, you know, doing nothing with their lives or playing video games. All right, I'm out, man. I'm going to be right. over here. You know, you want to come find me and like, you know, hang out? That's where I'm going to be, right? Mm. But if they're not going to do the work and they're not going to come along for the ride and they're not going to level up along with you, then you got to mm. leave them behind, man. You got to cut anchors off and just leave mm. them behind and just go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or you can hang out and stay there and find a Walmart cream, Brady. <laughs> <laughs> well, All right, buddy. Thank you so much, Rich. I, I owe you everything, man. I've been watching right. it for years. So yeah. And hey guys, listen, if you've read the book, do me a solid and leave a review on Amazon. Just let just let other guys know that you got value out of consuming the uh, content. I'm going to catch up here on these super chats and uh, got one here from Charles. A big one. Thanks, bro. Uh, another spoke for me is class. Yeah. Uh, knowing how to carry yourself in all circumstances, voice, voice, tonality, etiquette, style, good taste, peers and material pleasures have interesting experiences, anecdotes, and knowledge. You can relate to everything situational. Um, 
I know that Moff and Jaron and a bunch of the other guys in the chat have met Charles. He's a good guy. He's also on my um, 1% uh, TUA shows um, every other month or so. Um, he's right. You know, there is no lies detected there. And, and thanks for the uh, big donation, bro. Appreciate it. Um, we got Cruz. Hey, Rich. Great advice tonight. Thanks for your book. The Unplugged Alpha. Audible was great. Easy to re-listen. Yeah, um, grab it. I'm I'm working on on book two now. It'll it'll probably be uh, a little while before it's done, um, but uh, it's coming. Uh, if you want to do an after show, um, hook up with Moff. I think he's got a. Did you put your stereo link there, bud? Anyway, it'll be in his beacons. But um, he's going to do an after show. Um, Chris is a good guy and scary. Six hundred miles. Lean into the fear. Yep, hundred percent. Guys, that's the first thing that they get you to do if you ever get into plant medicine is there's going to be dark areas that are going to pop up in your life and they encourage you to lean into them, right? Um, at least identify it and, you know, decide if, if it's work or if it's something that you've just got to discard because it's a distraction. Jaron says lived in Idaho for a bit when he was younger. That's when I was first decided to move to Mexico. It's rough up there. Yeah. And 5093 Con says, between WSU and UI, there are tons of hot chicks in a five square mile radius. Go forth and slay young Brady. I'm assuming those are universities. I'm not familiar with the names. Um, ba -bum. Cool frat. Looks like we're all, yeah, there it is, Stereo Moff. So if you guys want to catch up with him, uh, he'll, he'll be doing a live show after this, bit of an after show. All right, um, let me quickly shout out to the uh, stuff that pays the bills. We'll go to the Unplugged Alpha in the code below. It's also over my shoulder, which is a supplement line. Um, pretty much everything is back in stock now. So if you need to order, you're ordering, and it's a first-time order, you can use coupon code ALPHA10 at checkout and get 10% off. It's all categorized properly on protein, fat burning, estrogen metabolism, testosterone boosters, Go check it out. It's a great supplement line. I did a um, collab with the folks um, from the Fulfillment Center. I don't know. It was about um, two and a half, maybe three months ago. If you guys want to go back and watch it, it's one of the early episodes. But uh, yeah, check it out. It just helps out. And um, if you're inclined to like receive stuff on a regular basis, like stuff like vitamin D and K, for example, there's a DK supplement in the lineup. It's combined into one unit. Uh, just go subscribe and save. It's kind of like how it's set up with Amazon where you subscribe and save for them to resend regular stuff to your house. Just use the subscribe and save option. You don't have to think about it. It's always there. Consider that. And uh, real quick on the tactical soap. Actually, I mentioned it last week, but I got the new line and there's the three pack boxes. This is pheromone infused soap. Um, this is generation three now, I think, because we got the twos up there over my shoulder maverick durden and bond as in tyler durden we've got uh eucalyptus and mint peppermint tea tree happens to be my favorite i would i would load up on this um i don't know if the if he keeps it in stock for forever but this one smells amazing and they have a lavender thistle now some people have messaged me and said well hold on a sec rich you said uh lavender is estrogenic in the uh the body and Yes, according to Dr. Anthony J, you're right. And I was talking to Scott about this earlier in the week by, by text. Um, that's the name of the scent. In the ingredients, there is no lavender in it. I don't know if that'll focus. Anyway, you can take a look at the website, but there's no lavender in the actual ingredients themselves. So check those out. You guys are showering anyway. Grab some tactical soap. We'll be back uh, next Monday for the next show. Apologies to those that I wasn't able to uh, attend to. Um, definitely come in early in the show. And if you need to talk to me um, and you've got the uh, you know the wherewithal, I do one-on-one -on -one private coaching. Uh, pinned in the top comment will be my link for coaching. I deal with you know the high net worth individual guys. So yeah, my price point's higher. So if you can't afford it, just come back next week. Just come into the show earlier and you know we'll try to make some time to get you on and do a little bit of a chop up session but there's always that option for those of you that want private consults all right thanks for watching this thursday i'm doing a playing to win podcast episode with retired heavyweight fighter ed latimer you're going to want to watch that um I th i'm going to have to check um but it's scheduled for around 11 12 o'clock so it's around midday um so make sure that you keep an eye out for that that'll be a good one that'll be a lot of fun we'll see you guys